Hello everyone, Trinitsu here, and today I am here with a little guide for Chao, for you. Bear in mind, this is my first guide, so there might be some errors here and there, I hope not. Uh, and if he's worth the bullet, so let's get started. Alright, so let's go over his talents. You level up your normal attacks first. Why? Because it's his mind source of damage. He's dealing mostly plunge damage and a low and high plunge damage. The normal plunge damage here is actually collision damage. I don't know why it's called like this, but in my opinion it should be renamed to collision damage. Collision damage is something that occurs when you are hitting the enemy mid-air before you're hitting the ground with the low or high plunge damage. The reason why I'm saying to level up this first is because obviously this is his mind source of damage. It is not his burst like here. This is completely false information. I don't know why it's, it is like this. I don't know what you're doing, people, but... Please stop. You're not leveling up this first. This is completely false. He's not a burst damage dealer. All his burst does is give him an amplification of damage bonus, which is normal charge or plunging attack damage bonus by this amount at level 13. He also has a life drain built in into this uh, ability. So you want to level it up to level 7 to turn it into 2% down from 2.5 or 3% previously. He also doesn't generate any anemo particles while in burst. So, for this skill, you want to use it before you're using your burst. You just use it twice and you immediately hit burst. You will eat all the particles before you're actually going to burst. So, yeah, this skill is by the way also a little bit useless. You can leave it at level 6, that's about it. Just stop there, done. As for his talents, uh, toast 2 or whatever, this one just buffs his damage a little bit over the course of his burst. This one is only effective for Constellation 6 Chao because it only amplifies his skill damage, which is totally useless before that. And his climbing talent is just 20% less stamina for climbing for the entire party. So let's see a little bit of normal Chao gameplay. Well, let's see how Chao plays. You burst, and then you can jump really high, and you just plunge. And you plunge, and you plunge, and you plunge. Yeah, that, that's the whole gameplay of, star, uh, of Chao. If you like to be a Dragoon, just like in Final Fantasy, then this is probably your character. Let's talk about his constellations. <laughs> this one will be a little bit of a letdown for many, because all of his constellations until C6 are kinda bad. Well, kinda. Like, Toast 4 here, like C2, up till C4, trash. Ultra trash. I don't know what Bihoi was thinking, but they're just trash. <laughs> So one is kind of okay, provides better rotation and smoother rotations, but that's about it. So, yeah. C2, garbage, as simple as that. It's, you're an on-field DPS, but that thing only works off-field, so it's, it's completely useless. I don't know what Miho was thinking, but yeah. C3 is as useless until you're C6, because you're not dealing a lot of skill damage, so just, just don't bother with it. Oh boy. C4 is... Wow. I, I have no words what Mihoyo was uh, smoking on this one, but it is what it is. And C5? Yeah, it's not gonna help C6 at all, so good job. However, his C6 is worth it, like, really worth it. If you really enjoy fast-paced gameplay, then this constellation is for you. So let's take a look at uh, Chao C6 gameplay. My team is pretty standard here with Zhongli, Bennett, Chao, and with a new addition of Farozan. But I'm gonna talk about Farozan a little bit later as this is about C6 Chao gameplay. Uh, and what you can expect of C6 R5 if you plan to go that far with him. Uh, as you can see, you're just dashing around. Uh, there's no directional inputs whatsoever. You don't have to manually steer it, it's all auto target. However, there are cases where it can break, especially on those wolf enemies here. Because sometimes if you're. Uh, if your skill was locked on one of the wolves and they disappear when you are trying to uh, use your skill you will just fly into the distance and say ciao so let's talk about his artifacts well best in slot set is obviously vermilion hereafter hands down no questions asked uh, as for the mind stats uh, on the sands you always want to go attack percent never ever go energy research please don't um, the best uh, goblet is Anemo Goblet over Attack Goblet. Attack Goblet is 5% worse, but that's okay, give or take. Um, and as well, depending on the weapon you want to go for crit rate or crit damage. As for the 4 piece Vermillion here after, on burst cost you're actually getting 8% attack. And every second that you lose HP, which Shao does, 
you actually gain 10% attack for that. So that stacks up to 4 times, which is 40%, so you have actually 48%, and with the 2-piece effect, you have 66% uh, attack. So, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. After 4 seconds, you're full and ready to go. Just plunge away. Since last patch, there is a new set called the Desert Paladin Chronicles. It's an inverted set of the VHA, because instead of attack, it provides damage percent bonuses to charge normals and uh, plunging attacks. However, to trigger the effect, you need to do one charge attack, which is a little bit lackluster. And in AoE scenarios, you're already losing a lot of damage. So, as you saw in the clip, um, the DPC set was a little bit slower. It's not a make or break, you can still use it. However, the problem of that set is the set that you gain from the domain you're running it. Uh, it's a bloom set, which is not needed for Chao. However, with the VHA set, you actually are getting a useful two-piece set bonus, which is called Ashes of the Offering, which provides 18% attack bonus for the two-piece set bonus. And you can pair them well together, since uh, that was the thing previously before the set was actually released. You were running two-piece combos. Um, the strongest two-piece combos is obviously unnumbered damage percent and attack percent, since that has the best uh, balance value out of those two. Uh, the worst one is unnumbered damage bonus mixed with another unnumbered damage bonus. That's why I wouldn't recommend farming Desert Pelvion Chronicles uh, in the City of Gold domain, since the other set is only for Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and Burgeon teams, unless your second side needs those uh, things, as I mentioned. Other than that, don't bother with the domain, just go straight up to VHA and farm ahead. Alright, about weapons. I'm gonna keep it short. Primordial Gentleman Spear is a special slot, as simple as that. Uh, we actually have a sheet on Chow mains, you, I will link it in the description so you can check it out yourself. Uh, Staff of Homer is closely behind. The only issue is that you need to be below 50% HP, which does not happen most of the time since you're running a healer or Bennett. Calamity Queller is actually a very nice uh, weapon since after one skill use you get actually the full effect after 6 seconds and that's the only downside, it takes 6 seconds to get the full effect and since it doesn't have a crit mind stat or you know something similar like that you will have a bad time building it uh, around it because you need to roll better sub rolls on your artifacts compared to those two since you can you know, a little bit forgive, a little bit crit rate, or a little bit crit damage, and just vice versa. As for the engulfing lightning and the scabbard spine, obviously you're not going to use this ones on Chao, unless you don't have anything else and you just pulled it on Raiden Banner, I don't know why you would pull it for him, but sure. <laughs> uh, just don't use it, just use it on your Raiden if you have it. Uh, the scabbard spine, if you happen to lose on the weapon pulls, um, you can use it. It's not that bad. It has 674 base attack, just like the Primordial Jetwing Spear. Provides 8 crit rate, which is kind of okay, and the energy recharge basically just, you know, you can ignore any ER subs that you would need to roll and just roll them into attack percent or crit damage instead. As for the first the weapons, nothing much to say. They're more or less almost the same-ish rotation-wise, damage-wise. Um, this one is obviously a little bit more pay to win since you need to have 5 refinements to get the cooler effect. The black loop pole you can buy with Master Glitter, but it's not the best weapon, it's like a discount homo. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> um, the Lithic Spear is another pay to win weapon. Uh, you can actually also only pay to win it. However, the effect is actually very strong if you run 4 D or Shire Fest. In most cases, you're only running 3. Uh, since 4 is a little bit of a meme composition. Um, Deathmatch is another pay to win weapon since you need to buy battle passes and to get the R5 you need to buy at least 5 battle passes. So yeah, that, that's a bot. But, but in those 5 months you should actually get one of the 5 star spears. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it about weapons. There's nothing much to say. Uh, just use any 5 star spear that you get. If you don't have a 5 star spear as a new player, use Favonius Lens, Blacklift, Lithic, or Deathmatch, uh, everything else, just don't bother with that. So, what about supports? Well, as you saw, I've used Farazan uh, in the previous clip slot, uh, simply because she's best in slot animal support. She provides 30% animal resistance threat, she gives 32% animal damage bonus, and at C6 she gives also 40% uh, crit damage. For Anemos and also provides uh, turret damage. 
I know many people are coping that you need to have her at C6 to be viable, but that is actually the case. Already at C0, she's actually very, very strong. Like, she's better than C4 Jean. Let, let that sink in. She's literally better than C4 Jean. However, at C0, you kind of want to have 280 to 300% energy recharge. That's her only downside, I can tell. Everything else, she is actually manageable, and that's uh, she has about 13 seconds buff up time for Chao. Other than that, get C2, obviously, try to get C6 for the best value of her and for any Anemo uh, user. The cool part of Frozen is that you can also use her as a side DPS <laughs> uh, if you build her correctly or as a mine DPS. And her mind DPS kind of surprised me because she's very very strong for a 4 star unit uh, compared to previous 4 star units. Um, yeah, she just manages on her own, she manages in teams, she is a very very s uh, strong unit and uh, honestly I didn't believe that uh, Ufsumaru would get a very very good enemy support unit. So yeah, here we have it, Farazan actually best in slot. For any animal comp, uh, yeah, you can you can just kind of do anything wrong with her. Just slot her into Kazuha, Haizu, whatever. It doesn't matter. She she will do the job. Actually, al almost better than the dependent regime. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, what what is there else to say? As for other supports of Chao, um, obviously Bennett, Zhongli, uh, if you have them, any other shield that he does, it doesn't matter. Cause if you have this combo, it you can literally almost run two comps, like literally just Chao and uh, Farozan. There's nothing much to talk about here. There are some um, other team comps like Chaoden. I will link actually uh, a more in-depth guide into that because that will be way too long uh, to go over this on this video. So, yeah. So, how to battery Chao? Yeah, Chao needs a battery. Yeah, just... He's a little bit energy hungry. However, there is two ways that you can go around this. First, we are funneling, and second, we are pre-funneling. You're using more than both of them, give or take. Uh, funneling means that you're eating another user's elemental particles. So, for example, if you have sucrose with sacrificial fragments, if you don't have C1 at this, you're using her skill twice. You immediately switch to Chao, press your burst. And while you're in that animation, you're eating those particles. Likewise, pre-funneling means that you're doing it yourself with Chao. You're using your skill twice, and then you immediately hit your burst button again to eat his particles. You can also do it a little bit more at once by using Sucrose uh, skill once. You immediately switch to Chao, double E, and Q. There's almost no downtime for that, so you have to be really, really quick to actually eat all the particles because even a slight delay will result in only eating half of it. And yeah, that's about it with, um, with how to battery chow. Those are like the most advanced, uh, well, most advanced, but most commonly used <laughs> uh, funneling techniques for him. There are some others. Uh, I'm gonna also link the energy management f uh, with a rotation guide more or less which is which which can extend a little bit uh in the description so chow's uh, optimal combos yeah there are some technically he's an easy to play character but he has also a very high skill ceiling so uh, i'm gonna explain what a high plunge and a low plunge actually is so when you saw on the talents there was actually a plunge a high and a low plunge right so the where it just says plunge, that is gonna be your collision damage. Collision damage is something that occurs if uh, you're plunging into the enemy and you're hitting in mid-air before you actually plunge to the ground and deal the AoE damage. Some enemies can get hit uh, through a high plunge and some enemies can only get hit through a low plunge with collision damage. So the thing with collision damage is that certain enemies are collision able and certain enemies are not or they are very hard to collision, so it always give or take. Usually the smaller enemies are not collision able and the bigger enemies they are. In most cases they, they always are. So there are two combos that you can do there. 
Ether, you low plunge spam them, which is the easier uh, version, or you do rakes, or how I called them back in the past and everybody else, jets. What rakes are is basically you do 8 and once, followed by a charge attack, followed by a jump, and followed by a light plunge or a high plunge. This is basically Chao's uh, highest damage multiplier throughout his entire uh, burst duration, but only for single target, okay? So the, the multi-target is a little bit different. The only issue is sometimes is that you don't even need to do these rakes or jets because they, A, they can get a little bit sweaty, B, you need a shielder to not get knocked off during the entire whole process because if you even get knocked once, it's over. Your DPS is just gone, right? You would have been better just spamming low plunges or high plunges. And that's the other thing. Like, if you don't want to sweat this too much, just ignore the rakes and jets and literally just do high plunges or low plunges and try to do collision damage on the enemy. And you're fine to go. Everything else is just, you know, very specialized. You don't, like, if you really want to know more, the, we have uh, on Trauma is a guide for that. I'm also gonna link that in the description, so you can actually read through that. There's a lot more information on that, and yeah. So what about C6? Well, for C6, <laughs> this is gonna be a little bit. Hmm, how should I explain it? Like, the short-term version is get good. Thank you for sticking till the end of the guide. I hope you enjoyed it. And also consider to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. It would help me out tremendously in the future. As for this C6 part, I'm sorry that I'm not gonna feature it. I might do it in the future, but I'm not sure. As for the Constellation 6 gameplay, I will just leave it to your own experience. Just find out how it is. You will definitely like it or dislike it for various reasons. Anyways, I'm out. Bye bye.